TRW here with Avec Infini Regret, uh, Volume 2, Battles of the French Religious Wars. <clears throat> um, I'll go ahead and talk a bit, because uh, there are some things that really do uh, deserve to be said here. So, this is in response to those uh, gamers who are going to want to know uh, directly um, the down and dirty. Uh, so I guess what do I think of this game, um, although it's, well, yeah. Um, so I was thinking earlier that uh, this is certainly in the top 10 games, top 10 list of games uh, that I've played. Um, then I actually figured out, actually I think it's in the top 5, um, and... I can even name that quick uh, top five. Now that I just pulled this off the top of my head, but I was going by gut gut to instinct from all the games I've played so far. Um, let's see, all of these all of these games I've made videos on. Not surprisingly, since uh, these videos pretty much chronicle the uh, my the vast vast majority of gaming experience I have. Period. But that list of top five would be Rebel Yell, Main Battle Area, Assault, um, A Frozen Hell, or the or the TCS uh, series, Tactical Combat uh, series, and then this one, AIR, Avec Infini Regret. Um, just a great... So all of these games in my top five... I consider to be examples of what war gaming, you know, can be, should be. These games kind of represent, for me, anyways, kind of the uh, um, well, certainly in some ways, pinnacle of of tabletop paper war gaming. Um, although I, I I admit that there are different ways that you can define pinnacle, but for me, when I say pinnacle here, I just mean this is why war game, paper tabletop war games are even worth anything, worth any time, worth any attention. Okay, now with respect to Avec Infini Regret in particular, um, just a great series. I think I own every game in this series, uh, but let me explain what that means, except for one. I don't actually own the very first one. So, Avec Infini Regret is an evolution of uh, Paris Fabienne Una Mesa, which is the one I don't have, and that was uh, designed by Ben Hull and published in Vivictus uh, Magazine number 50. Now, I'm, I'm pretty certain that uh, that game, again, Paris Fabienne Una Mesa, went on, uh, went on to be... Wait. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm not... I'm not claiming anything certain about the designer's history, but certainly in publication terms, that game came out in Vivictus, and then later the first game in the MPBS series, Musket and Pike Battle series, came out. That should be this accursed civil war. Um, and again, without claiming anything behind the scenes, this accursed civil war, which started the MPBS, uh, is is a more complex version of that first Vivictus magazine game, Pari Fabian Unamesa. So then, while MPBS continues under GMT, um, that Vivictus magazine game uh, continued under another designer. Um, yes, under another designer. So, so clearly these are two different lineages. There's um, so uh, Pari Fabian Bien Unamesa is the common ancestor of the MPBS under GMT, and then the Avec Infini Regret uh, series uh, from Vivectus. Okay. Um, so I own Newport 1600, which was later published in Vivictus number 105. I own Kirchholm 1605, which is just really, really good. 
Uh, that was published in Vae Victus number 116. Then there's Ave Infini Regret, the first volume, which was published, published by Vae Victus um, as a folio game. And then there was this volume too. Um, yeah, and then there was this volume too, which was also published as a folio game. Um, and by the way, there is another one which I own, which will, I'm positive we'll be getting to video, but I won't even talk about that one yet. That picks up, that ports this design, let's see, about, uh, about uh, what's 50, 60 years later. Um, yeah, about a half century later. Yeah. Um, but I'm sure that, I'm sure I'm going to get into that one. Um, that's all ready to go. I just have so many things I want to do gaming-wise. Uh, but that, that is definitely coming. And while, I, while I've said that, I'll go ahead and say that every time I come back to this one, AIR or Avec Infini Regret, I always come away uh, telling myself I've got to get into MPBS. I'm looking, I'm looking at my Nothing Gained But Glory box, which is about four feet from my hands. Um, and it's just already go, actually, actually I'm looking at Nothing Gained But Glory, but uh, underneath, that game is uh, This Accursed Civil War, which is probably where I'm going to start uh, with MPBS. Um, yep, okay. Now back to this design. Um, let's talk about scaling. Um, in general, this is, and this is very general, in general fire combat is going to result in either no effect or one loss of morale level or morale status. Um, <clears throat> Again, again, and in general, units have four morale levels. Let's see, um, you go from normal to disordered, to, what uh, was, um, was it, shaken, then routed? I'm trying to remember. Um, let's see, you go from, uh, in general, you go from normal to disorder, disorder to shaken, shaken to broken. There we go. Um, and then, of course, double units have an extra, an extra level of disorder in there. So double units, naturally, um, not surprisingly, have five morale levels. Um, okay. But again, fire combat will either result in no effect or or a loss of uh, morale level. Melee, on the other hand, is quite different. Melee will always result in something. Uh, the combat results table is a, uh, is a, you have a final, final modified die roll, and that final modified die roll tells you what the, what the result is the, to the attacker and what the result is to the defender. The bottom line is there's always a result. Uh, there's always a result to at least one side, and actually in a majority of cases, as a matter of fact, think in terms of, again, this is a D10 um, combat system, and any result between zero and nine, so actually it's the normal, it's the normal 10, uh, 10 point results uh, when zero is zero and not 10, when the zero on the die roll is, is zero and not 10. Uh, so you'll, you'll have a result to both sides, both sides. If you go, if the final modified die roll result is less than zero, then you'll have a result, obviously, to the attacker, none to the defender. And if the final modified die roll is 10 or more, you will have a result to the defender, not to the attacker. But bottom line is you'll never have a no effect on both sides in, me in melee. Now, that is understandable. When you think of the scale, um, where is the scale? You're basically talking about one hour um, turns, although I think that that's really, I think that's really a, a fluid scale there. Um, and also think in terms of an entire wing, an entire wing could be made up of as, as few as three units. Um, now it could be, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Could be as many as nine, 
but it could be as few as three units. So that's, uh, again, a scale and scope uh, thing. So combat or melee, I should say. Melee in a one hour time period here is going to result in something. Is just is going to result in something. But this entire battle we're looking at here, Ivry fought in 1590, only, la only lasts eight turns. So again, it's a design thing that a lot happens in each turn, but battles only last six, seven, eight, nine, ten turns. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, another way to put that is things do not develop slowly here. Uh, quite the opposite. Things develop pretty fast here. I have no problem at all. As a matter of fact, if I don't mind games like this that develop fast, but I really don't mind games that develop slowly either. I think I've pretty much demonstrated that in dozens and dozens of videos. I really I have no problem with slowly developing games. All right. Um, what's happened here... All right, what's happened is this, uh, this league wing here um, galloped up, not, not charged, but galloped up with their writers here. And this unit eliminated, uh, so we have the first elimination, eliminated this mounted arquebusier unit. He rolled very high though um, and advanced. And then this unit meleeed and pushed this defender back um, and advanced. So now, uh, that's the end of melee for that wing, so now we're going to go on to reactivation time. Now I am going to show reactivation. Mm. Here, to me, it makes sense that, um, Omala, here, uh, with his wing, would try to, um, would, would try to, uh, reactivate. Okay, so a player may attempt to reactivate if it's under charge or march orders. Um, for a second time, for a maximum of two activations, the player finds the wing's current order. Okay, so first of all, I'll go ahead and, uh, just gonna roll here. We, oh, he wants low. He got two. So I rolled, roll there. Um, check the current wing's orders on the reactivation preemption table. Uh, so he has charge orders. Uh, so he needs three or less to reactivate. Um, you uh, use the command modifier, but his is zero. Um, minus one for cavalry wing. No, this is an infantry wing. Um, double check. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, it's an infantry wing. Um, plus one if the wing commander is adjacent to an unbroken enemy unit. No, he's not. So there. So I rolled a two, that's three or less, so he will reactivate. Okay, now I want to talk about this now. Um, so I go back up to preemption attempt. So a continued or a reactivated wing, like Omala now, successfully reactivated, he can be preempted. If he is successfully preempted, then he will not be bypassed, he will be finished. Now... Do I, you know what, let's just, let's just do this. Um, the next, uh, yeah, the next uh, royal wing is actually going to attempt to, um, to uh, preempt. All right, so this is back here. This is the next royal wing behind the advance guard there, Baron, that, that moved forward. And right off the screen there is the um, is the uh, league wing, the league uh, right wing, that successfully reactivated. So now you're going to go back up to preemption attempt. Uh, once a wing is activated, the inactive player, that would be the, the royal side here, um, may attempt to preempt his activation and activate one of his own wings instead. If he succeeds, uh, okay, then we talk about bypass, which will not be in this case. In this case, the league right wing will be uh, will be finished. So first, we're going to try for 
preemption. Now preemption is exactly the same as identical chances and modifiers for as reactivation. So what applies here, this is an in infantry, oh, so let me talk about preemption. Once a wing is activated, the inactive player may attempt to preempt uh, this activation. To do so, he chooses one of his non-activated wings. So I know that the royal left here is, is not activated yet because he's still on his front side with his movement allowance. When he's finished, he's flipped to his back side, which just has a dot instead of a movement value telling you that he's finished. But he's not finished, he's available and he has march orders. Um, so one of his non-activated wings under charge or, or march orders and consults the reactivation preemption table, finds the current orders, again, which is a march. So he needs a two or less. So he's gonna roll a five. I don't think he's gonna get it. He can subtract the commander's uh, value. Commander's, uh, what do we call it? The one. Um, this is not a cavalry wing, this is an infantry wing. And so they don't get it. Um, so they don't get it. So what happens to him? If a preemption attempt fails, the commander is marked no reactivation, which is pretty obvious. Then you, this, all right, so let me find a no reactivation uh, marker. Where is it? Um, all right, where is it? Piles and piles of markers and I can't see. Um, <laughs> where, I'm blind, sans are, oh, yeah, I'm looking for English, and of course it's in French, I should have said sans are active, that's no reactivation, <laughs> uh, all right, so I'm going to mark him, because all this means is, to, is a reminder that when I get around to um, activating him again later, um, he cannot uh, reactivate. All right, so now we can pick up again with the um, with the league right wing. So now we're back to the uh, league right wing here under Almala here, um, the leader who successfully reactivated. Um, at this point, I want to mention two things because the reason why I want to mention these is that I I really do not want to give an impression false impression that this game is simplistic because it's really not um, there are two things that I try hard to remember or I try hard not to forget <laughs> um, one the game does use front flank and rear hexes so for a double unit it's front 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 flank rear 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 flank and for simple units, what are called simple units or one hex units, you have, like for this unit, it's front, front, flank, rear, rear, flank, front, front. Um, so it's significant what is in, for example, it's significant what is in the front hexes of a unit. However, there's also the fire zone. And the fire zone for cavalry and infantry is the front and flank hexes. So, bottom line is you can fire out to your flank, which is something to remember. Um, I know for me, playing some other games, when I come back to this one, I sometimes have trouble remembering that because, because of these other games I'm playing, I'm thinking you fire to your front. Um, so, for example, this unit here could fire at this one here. It, because it's in his fire zone. Uh, the other, maybe the easier way for me to remember fire zone is, and, and that you can fire into your fire zone, is that you can't fi fire to your rear. And that makes perfect sense. You can't fire to your rear. Um, uh, and the other thing is defensive fire. This is incredibly important. Um, again, it's sometimes easy for me to forget, or I definitely need to remind myself that uh, you can fire defensive um, uh, defensive fire or reaction fire 
In an in inactive unit can fire when it has been the target of fire coming from its fire zone. So basically this is return fire. Um, and then an active unit enters a hex of its fire zone. This case includes an attacking unit that advances after melee, retreats, or becomes broken. These are extra things that... Uh, <laughs> I just don't remember because I think when these guys advanced here after combat in the previous activation, I guess these guys could have fired. Uh, this game just allows a lot more than, uh, than I'm used to after playing other more simple games. That's why this, this game is really not simple.